Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Boy, oh boy, do I have somebody amazing here for you today. Now, I don't typically read somebody's bio, and David, I'm not going to read your bio because we're going to have it in the show notes, but you must know a few things before we get started, everybody. So David Houle, who is here today, is a futurist thinker and speaker. He, sp he has spent um, forever, over 20 years in media, um, created and launched MTV, Nickelodeon, VH1, CNN, Headline News. Um, it, you've spoken, uh, I don't know, is it up to 2,000 keynotes by now, David? Somewhere between 1,700 and 2,000 over 16 years, yeah. There's not many people that I know uh, that have spoken at NASA. David, have you spoken there? Yes, I've spoken at NASA. I've spoken at National Renewable Energy Lab. I've spoken a number of times at Burning Man. So I've covered the spectrum. You have covered the gamut. Um, I have known David for quite a few years. I have all of his books. They're Thank you. everywhere. You're welcome. They're all over the place. I don't have this spaceship Earth because I lent it to my mom, and she better give it back to me, David. I'll give um, you. A, I'll give you one on Sunday if I see you. Perfect. You will see me because I will be there. But um, so David has launched a global nonprofit called This Spaceship Earth. And ab above and beyond that now, there is the Sarasota Institute, which I have my program because, as David said, when I first went and joined as a member, he said, you'll be one of the first. And I never forgot that. So I still have it and I will keep it forever because this is a 21st century think tank and it's coming back in person for the first time this coming Sunday, which I will be at and I'm super excited. So with all of that blah, blah, blahing, welcome to the show, David Houle. Thank you for having me, Sharon. I really appreciate it. I, I love your energy. I love your optimism. And, uh, you know, we need to work together at this critical time in human history to make sure we take the right road for the future for all of us. Yes. The Institute's about. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure. So David, I want to give the audience a real picture of what, why the Institute started, what it has looked right, like through uh, the panorama and where we're at today. Sure. So it started, um, so I have a friend named Phil Kotler, and people who are in marketing know him as the father of modern marketing. I mean, he is to marketing what Peter Drucker was to management consulting. And he's, you know, he's written like 80 books, most of them on marketing. And he and I would always get together a couple of times a year. He was a snowbird down here. And he said, we ought to do something because Sarasota has so many great people. And Sarasota, you know, based on its population, disproportionately has really interesting people, you know, presidents from Harvard, Leonard Goldenstein, who, you know, uh, Goldenstein, who founded ABC, Jim Duffy, the greatest president of ABC network is here, you know, all these great people I'm like Phil. And so, you know, we looked at the Aspen Institute as a model, but, you know, that's 70 years old, kind of become calcified in the last century. And, and so, you know, as a futurist, we ended up creating a 21st century think tank. So we did that conversation, we had that conversation in 2017, launched the website, started doing some thought pieces, and pretty much it wasn't until, you know, when, when you signed up back in January of 2020, we launched the Institute uh, up in State College of Florida in about an 800 seat auditorium, and we have two, we had two symposiums, one on education and one on um, uh, climate, the climate crisis, and then we had to shut down for COVID. So the Institute basically has decided on 10 topics and they're on our website. Our website is sarasotainstitute.global. And the 10 topics, you know, from climate to healthcare, to education, to technology, to natural resources, to intelligence, to computing, um, are all things that we have taken upon ourselves to ask the big questions, frame the big questions for the 21st century for these topics, for the world, for the United States of America and the Gulf Coast of Florida. And we're totally future facing. We not have no corporate underwriting that will affect us ever. And Which means you're free. Free. And also, if, if 
you know, oftentimes think tanks get quoted in the media and they're of the left, conservative or liberal or progressive, no politics, because politics is part of the problem these days. So, so we are a 21st century think tank based here in Sarasota. And the goal is to have half a dozen, you know, six to eight in-person symposiums every year at the state on this campus at State College of Florida in Bradenton, who is one of our partners in this, and to raise the issues and have conversation. Because even though Sarasota is really cultured, we all like to think we're cultured and we're educated, it's really more kind of like being benefactors. There really isn't any creative thinking on architecting the future. Um, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to bring the, we want to make the awareness of the world that Sarasota is a great place, utilize the resources of Sarasota to inform the world, and then to get all kinds of international experts and thought leaders and futurists here to talk about the future with the members who are here. So I remember um, having that conversation with you at Ringling on the campus. Um, right before the pandemic right. started and just being so excited because there are so many, just like you mentioned, there's so many fascinating people that live in this area and to get, I mean, I, I brought my parents to um, one of the symposiums because I really wanted them to see, oh, I remember. Right, right? Right, right? And they, they loved every minute of it um, just to, because they grew up in Ireland and they raised us in New York and in New York, of course, we were so used to just, you, you would just run into different people all the time. My dad worked at New York hospital and sometimes here in Florida, you, get, you know, for people that are retired, you don't even realize how many wonderful people can, can be right here in your backyard. Mm -hmm. And it was an invigorating day to say the least, um, to be able to, to hear even the president of, of Ringling talking of, about his um, previous tenure uh, with the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And it was just fascinating. And, and now more than ever, I feel like we've been in such, um, what should we call it, David? We should well, come up with a new term sure, for what- you know, so, so COVID really, um, the silver lining in COVID is this. As you know, Sharon, I'm writing a series of books on the 2020s. It's the most mm -hmm. disrupted decade in human history. And I can talk about that briefly. But basically, the idea is that is that COVID, so there's this con I, I did an interview for NPR and he liked this phrase and he made it the name of the phrase. And I ended up using writing it for columns and putting it into the second book of, uh, of the 2020s. Um, think of COVID as a bike with training wheels. Now, either as a parent or as a kid, you've had the experience of being on a bike with training wheels. Why does a child go on a bike? They learn how to brake, to turn, hand signals, and traffic, and then the wheels come off and you learn balance, right? So, so what COVID has taught us is to under, to, in a time of great upheaval, something that is out of left field, a major disruption, how we can maintain balance. Mm -hmm. So what COVID has taught us is how to be balanced for the rest of this decade, because there's going to be other equally large disruptions. And you know, the phrase is whether you, you know, haven't scuba dived in 10 years or skied in 10 years, you'll say that to somebody and they'll go, oh, it's just like riding a bicycle. You don't forget, mm -hmm. right? So so what so what I really think of COVID is the kind of wake-up call for how mm -hmm. we will need to be adaptive and resilient for the rest of the decade. Um, back before we had all these anti-vaxxers and I thought, you know, the, the, the metaphor was, oh, light at the end of the tunnel. And so the way to think about COVID is a tunnel and the daylight from which we entered the tunnel is not the daylight that we're gonna enter into whenever we get out of the tunnel, and there's been about a year to 18 months of accelerated change, maybe five years worth of change. So COVID is really done. And as a futurist, I love COVID because as you've heard me speak, I've always had to say as a futurist, I want you to suspend what you think reality is. Because most people think reality is fixed. So this is where my life is. Yesterday's gonna be the same as tomorrow. And, and this is constant. And what COVID has done is made everybody realize, oh, my reality changed. 
So like instead lightning. of, I don't know that I believe you, David, that this is going to happen. They're now asking me, so what's going to happen, David? Mm -hmm. So as a futurist, even though my business model was wiped out, um, getting on planes and talking, um, it's really been an eye opener because people are receptive to listening to a futurist because we really are at a critical juncture in human history. Yes, we are. My goodness, that's the understatement of the world. I mean, here we were excited about the Institute launching in 2020, right. right? And how everything has completely shifted. So for me, really, it's um, it's very exciting to be able to come back on Sunday. It, it makes me feel like, because it's really been a long time. It's been the longest five minutes of my life, right? <laughs> it's been, it's so hectic. So now to come back and to hear hope is what I'm looking for, David. Hope is what I'm looking for. It's what I've been looking for um, since the beginning. And it's been tumultuous. It's been um, exciting. I've said silver lining more times that I can think of because there's been so many great things that have happened through this. Certainly a wonderful times for everybody to be with their family. Um, and to think about the future working in, in the mental health field and, and listening to so many people that have anxiety and are concerned to, to be around and listen to people that really take this, this very seriously to like, how are we going to, to relaunch back into this new world together? So, so what would it be like on Sunday for everybody? So, you know, the thing about hope is uh, it can be too passive a word. Mm. So where we are in the 2020s, and I, I think I may have reached out to you earlier in the year with a couple of futurists, we created a global movement called the Fork in the Road Project. Um, one of the great futurists, our book, Mr. Fuller, wrote a book called Utopia of Oblivion, Fork in the Road for Humanity. And we all felt, and the Institute strongly feels that this decade is the opportunity for humanity and Americans and Gulf Coast Floridians to create the future we want rather than the kind of mindless future we're bar barreling towards, you know, kind of unconsciously, ignorantly. So hope is going to be delivered on Sunday. Basically, the Sunday um, symposium is called the climate crisis, the big and important things, mm. because what has happened with the climate crisis is we think we're doing things. We think, oh, Biden got us back into the Paris 2015. Oh, Biden's going to build back better. It's nothing but words. So we are worse off, we humanity are worse off relative to the climate crisis than we were 10 years ago. I mean, the word uh, sustainability is a meaningless word unless it's talked about globally. So we, with the direction change, we've left denial and entered disconnection, right? With, with the language change, we think it's going better. And and I don't know if it was on recording or right before you used the phrase, blah, 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 right? So <laughs> Greta, my Thunberg, Greta Thunberg, the great 17-year-old climate activist out of Sweden, um, you know, gave a speech two weeks ago. And she said, build back better, blah, blah, blah. Enter, you know, carbon neutral by 2050, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> she says, you know, we're all talking about it, not doing it. So the hope is you can make a difference. There's a column that was in the Sarasota Herald Tribune yesterday that I wrote that basically, and they changed the title. So it's on my blog. You can go to davidhill.com and read it. This is an opportunity, right? So here's the opportunity for supply chain and inflation. Inflation is temporary. I'm of the school. It's in temporary. It's not permanent. Number one, it's this perfect storm. Uh, there's too, a lot of stimulus money, a lot of people saving money, a lot of pent up demand and the bad supply chain. And I said, this is an opportunity. Just choose not to buy, mm -hmm. right? Or the things that are going up in cost, don't buy those, buy other things or go through all the stuff in your pantry and don't buy. And then there was this whole article about, the, the, I kept hearing this stuff about the gasoline prices are going up, right? Oh, because of uh, uh, you know, heavy weather and, and the damage of the refineries. And they keep saying, we don't know when demand will subside. And I wrote in this column, we are the demand. Like, you know, you're driving in traffic and you get really angry because there's all these other cars. You don't realize that you're part of traffic too. So you're part of demand too. So, you know, just decide you're going to drive less 
I work from home. To some degree, you work from home. And I just consciously say, I'm not going to drive. I'm going to see if I can go another month with a tank of gas, right? Yes. So, yes. Drive, right? so the point is, the hope is to take on responsibility for standing up and saying, this is how I want to go. I mean, look at what's happening. And, and you're into the workplace a lot. The workplace, I've been saying that people aren't going to come back to work. When people go through transformation, as so many people having COVID, they're just not going to come back for the same underpaid job working for a bad boss. Right. right? You know, Absolutely. so and, and people, oh, we'll just get rid of the unemployment, the unemployment and people come back. No, they're not. People have had transformations mm -hmm. and the workplace has to transform to keep up with the people. So for the first time, I think in this century, labor and employees have the dominant position now because mm -hmm. you got to pay me more. You got to give me benefits. I want to work remotely. There's all this negotiation going on. So, so the hope that we're going to talk about on Sunday is here's how bad it is and here's what we can do. But the stuff that we can do is big stuff. It's important stuff and you have to participate. Right. But you taught me that for sure. I, I will say that um, there was one of the times that we were having one of our going off conversations. Yeah, we have, we've had a lot of those and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> me too. But um, you were saying it was about Earth Day and it was just making you crazy that everybody was saying save right. planet Earth, right? And I had I have been guilty of saying that myself or posting something and you just brought it so, like, just made it so easy to think about that we are responsible for doing our part. Right. We are responsible for doing one thing and all of the one things that we have done in this condensed longest five minutes that we've ever been in, you know, I went from just using, you know, recycle bags at Publix to like you, I mean, I've barely driven my car. I told my girlfriends that live in Tampa, I said, listen, I haven't driven my car in about a year over the bridge. So I will come visit you. It will be a lot for me because I have <laughs> only been riding my bicycle. David mentioned before we hit record, he's only seen pictures of my sneakers, my pink sneakers and my bicycle and the water. And that's true because um, we, well, I would hope that all of us have taken this time and, and really changed and really um, gone inside. And you're right, you know, um, the workplace has, absolutely had to change. Um, I love talking to corporations about mental health in the workplace and understanding that it's not going to go back. People finally had this opportunity to actually realize their worth, which is really a good thing, you know, that um, we should have new models. We should have a hybrid model. I put an ad up for one of my uh, physician clients the other day, and it said location. And I just wrote hybrid. Which right. I think should be the word, right? You want to work from home some days, you want to go into the office some days, you want to do telehealth, whatever it is, we have these options. So it's so fantastic. David, more about Sunday, because I really want people to, I, I want people to know and get involved in this institute. I think that it's um, so important now, more now than ever for us to really, you know, really be surrounded by people that can you know, I always say like, you have to level up and you have to be around people that can, that can encourage bigger thinking, you know, yeah. and, and you have definitely um, been wonderful in that respect for me, because I learned more about climate change than I ever wanted to actually, I, there was a piece of me that wanted to stay in denial for a while. So why is it important for people to get involved in the Institute? And it is a nonprofit. So everything um, revolves around the donations of others. Right. So let's give yeah, people an understanding I, of why. At some point in time, I'm really, right now, I just want to make sure I can logistically relaunch and serve the members, you know, so the revenue streams are membership donations and sponsorships. But this Sunday, as I said, on, on, on Sunday, October 24th, it's the climate, I'm looking at my website, excuse me, I'm looking with my camera, the climate crisis, the big and urgent things. And it's Sunday, October 24th from two to four, and people, who, it's only for members, so you have to become a member. So if anybody's listening as a member, you can still attend. Um, but the idea is to, you know, we've got myself. I'm giving a talk. I'm a moderator. We have Tim Rummage, who is my, who is my, uh, who is my uh, co-author, co-founder of the Spaceship Earth. He's doing a talk on the Quartermaster's Report. He did one in our book that came out in 2015. 
you know, quartermaster reports on the supplies of the ship. So he did that and he's going to do one in 2021 and looking back. So in the six years, what has happened in all these areas? Then I'm going to follow him and talk about here are the big things, the simple way to think about how we face climate crisis between now and 2030. And then a really great thinker, um, Chris Tucker, who's written a book, A Planet of Three Billion, and has really changed the way I think about things about climate on how we humanity need to go from the 8 billion we have now down to the 3 billion by 2100. In other words, we need population has a direct correlation to the climate crisis. The more people, the more problems we have. And so the idea is through time with planning to reduce that. So, and then we, and then we have uh, Bob Bunting joining us, who is the uh, scientist. Uh, he was the chief scientist for NOAA for a number of years. And he's the CEO of the Climate Adaptation and Mitigation Center here in Sarasota. So we have, we have super intellectual power. And the reason somebody should go is to be involved with that and to ask these great brains whatever they want to ask. Now, we have two memberships. One is local, and, I, and you're a local, and I'll always make sure that you are one, which means that you can attend any one of these you want in addition to everything that's going up in the website. For those, and that's like $200, you know, and there'll probably only be Gulf Coast people. We have members who are international, we have members who are outside the state of Florida. So for them, we came up with a global, which is only $75. So you can access every single one. You know, so the webinar that's on, um, on October 24th will be 10 days later, it will be up on the website. So anybody around the world who's a global member can go see an edited version of this. They just won't be able to participate in the questions mm -hmm. and see it in person real time. So that's that. And then the other one we have is, is um, it's going to be on, 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 everyone is on Sunday. The other one, and what are the two big issues facing us today? Climate and on 1212, the future of vaccines and public health. Oh, Lord. Absolutely. <laughs> right. I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's, per, I mean, and that's, and that's really, and we have great stars. Um, Donna Peterson, who is the, Dean of the College of Public Health, USF, out of Tampa, is going to be mm. there. Um, Kevin Sneed, who is the Dean and Professor of the College of Pharmacology, Pharmacy at, at South Florida, is going to be there. Dr. Ben Sachs, a, a, a global luminary in the health field uh, who specializes in vaccines and public health, is there. And then we're going to have a panel on that. So, you know, what are the that's what we are. We're not here promoting something. We're not here promoting a development. We're not here saying, aren't we cool? We're giving money to the arts. We're having thought leading, innovative conversations on how we collectively face the future. And in this case, it's climate change on Sunday, October 24th. And on Sunday, 1212, it's what I just said. And um, they're, all of them are on the State College of Florida, brand new building. Interestingly enough, in the five minutes, as you call it, for COVID, they mm -hmm. built an entire building next to the Neil Performing Arts Center, which is where wow. you and I were there. And it's got 150 seats. It's really intimate. It's great. Um, you can't attend unless you've been vaccinated. Uh, masks are requested. And so we're, we're taking it to the highest protocol possible. And we will because our members are, you know, probably our local members average age of 60. So we have to be careful of their health. So, sure. yes. Um, climate change, October 24th, and the future of public health and vaccines on Sunday, February 12th. Oh my January, goodness. December 12th, sorry. And then Putting we that one in my January, camera. February, March, and April. Fantastic. Well. well, for sure, I'll be there on Sunday, and I'll be there on the 12th of December because um, I like nothing more than hearing about people that actually understand science to right. discuss vaccines. That's fantastic. I'll look forward to that one, David. Right. And, I, and I thank you for coming. In, and as I said, if you if you want to bring your beloved, you're welcome, or you want to bring your stepson and they've Thank been you. vaccinated, you just let us know in advance. Thank you so much. Thank you, David, for all that you do. I highly recommend checking out David's work. Um, you've certainly contributed so much and continue to give us so much to, to think about so we can be better, better people, better, what do we call them on um, the crew? We could be better crew. Spaceship on crew. That's right. There are no passengers on Spaceship Earth. We are all crew become crew. You are crew. Thank you for having me.
Thank you so much, David. Be well. Thank Be you. well. So don't forget, if you mention that you have seen the show or listened to the podcast, Thai Technology, three months for free.